Good evening. We gather together tonight to tell the story of God's love poured out, to reflect on our own humanity, and to soak in the depth of God's love for us. For those of you I haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Ren Serna. I'm the senior pastor here, and it's such a joy to be with you all tonight. Our service tonight is a simple one of scripture and song. You'll be invited to remain seated for most of the service, but as we're going through the scripture readings, when we get to the point where Jesus is crucified, we'll invite you to stand and to remain standing through that scripture, through the next song, and through the next scripture after that as we stand watch with Jesus like so many did before. And we'll cue you and it's in your bulletin, but just wanted to let you know that that's coming. As we settle into this space, I would invite you to join me in our call to worship. It's on the screen and in your bulletin. You're invited to say the words in bold out loud. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God, who redeems us from sin and death. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I invite you to join in the uh, bold parts of the litany that will be presented on the screen. Blessed Christ, Son of the Creator, conceived by the Spirit, born of a young woman, the Word of the Almighty, we worship you. Servant Christ, friend of sinners, the one who touches lepers, the great physician, source of all comfort, we worship you. 
crucified Christ, wellspring of justice and love, provider of all faithfulness, full of kindness and mercy, we worship you. Almighty Christ, high priest of God, king of heaven, Lord of lords, ruler of all creation, we worship you. Jesus, you who bear our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, you who redeem the whole creation, have mercy on us. Holy Lord, on this haunting holy day, we come to the place of the skull, the place of the cross, the place of salvation. In the face of such suffering, show us the face of our Savior. In the shadow of such evil, show us the light of your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
Then Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then Jesus came to the disciples and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, If this man were not a criminal we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? 
Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side.
with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. But the chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said that I am the king of the Jews. But Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but to cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scriptures had said. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Crucified on a tree of his own making. Crucified. 
and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabbatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, This man was God's son.
Beloved people of God, let us pray for the world God loves so much. Almighty and eternal one, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ, and by your spirit you form and guide the church here and throughout the world. Help us to persevere in faith and by word and deed proclaim your name and bring the good news of your never-ending love. As you guide your church and make it holy, strengthen and uphold the officers, leaders, musicians, and all the staff of this congregation. Keep them in good health and safety, at peace and strong, in faith and in struggles, as they strive to pursue through your gifts all that you call them to do. And bless this congregation. Increase the faith and understanding of all. Keep them in communion, one in the fullness of faith, united in the fellowship of love. For those who are seeking new steps and next steps, grant them the courage and rebirth they need for the fullest life you desire for them. You created us and gave us the will to long to know you and find the peace only you may bring. Grant that all may recognize signs of your love and grace in the world and in our lives and gladly come to acknowledge you, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity, and transgressions and sin. Creator of the magnificent universe, hold this world in the arms of your care. Heal the damages we have done. Make us the good stewards you created us to be. Bring all things to fulfillment in you. May future generations hear all creation resounding in anthems of praise. Champion of the poor and oppressed, in your mercy and goodness, grant wisdom to those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, and freedom and share in the goodness of your creation. Give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Thank you for hearing the prayers of all who call on you in trouble. May they have the joy of receiving your help in need. We pray these things in the name of the Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Jesus, we wait here by your tomb, carrying our grief, the grief of the betrayer, the grief of the denier, the grief of the crucifiers. We carry the grief of the lost, the heartbroken and the bereft. Upon you was laid the grief of us all. It is finished. God of endings, God of darkness, God of the tomb, God of dark days and great loss, be with us now as we wait with Jesus. Amen.